What is going on guys, it is JJ here back with my third and final Euro 2020 match reaction. Now, today we're going to just talk quite a bit about the Serbia versus Lithuania contest. Now, obviously, coming into this game, Serbia just faced probably one of the most disheartening Euro 2020 qualifiers that they could have had, getting an absolute battering uh, to the Ukraine. So, coming back, this game was pretty much all or nothing for the qualifiers for Serbia. The Serbians, they really, really needed a victory. So I feel like that sort of translated to the formation. In the first contest, they had this really weird, like, 3-4-1-2, and it just didn't work with the talent that they had on the field. Look, Jovic wasn't utilized well. Mitrovic subbed in, wasn't utilized well. Kostic wasn't used. Lukic wasn't used. Uh, Tadic was not used well whatsoever. And, and the back line was just a shambles. So in today's game... It was a complete switch, which I mean, Lithuania is a different opponent than what the Ukraine is, but at the same time, uh, this this Serbia team looked so, so much better. Like, like light years better than what they did uh, against the Ukraine. Um, I, I say the Ukraine, against Ukraine in general. Serbia scoring four goals, beating Lithuania 4-1. to one. It, It's funny because Lithuania's only goal was a penalty, but they also only had one shot on target the entire game. Uh, they had eight shots in total, none of those on target. Uh, well, I guess besides one, uh, compared to Serbia, who had 22 shots in total, 10 of those on target. A brace for Aleksandar Mitrovic, which is not very surprising the way that he was bullying the Lithuanian defenders in their weird, like, 3-4-3 formation. And then Luki Jovic as well, getting a goal nearly a minute after Mitrovic got his. So it's it was it was a good game overall if you're a fan of, of bullying, because they absolutely bullied Lithuania up front. The 4-1-3-2 the with Maksimovic sitting in the hole in that one in the midfield. They put Tadic in the attacking mid position and just said, do what you got to do. Just absolutely do your business. And he did exactly that the entire game. Like, Tadic, Tadic pulling strings, uh, you know, the side passes out to Lukic or Kostic, and then the the weird, I, I don't want to say weird, but the sort of like pick runs between Luka Jovic and, and Alexander Mitrovic. Mitrovic was just a big body everywhere, so he's immediately occupying pretty much anyone in his path. And then Luka Jovic is able to capitalize on that space. He's a good dribbler, he's a very good facilitator, and of course, he's probably one of the best shooting strikers that that is in world football right now. Um, so him at around the 18-yard box and him getting those balls to Mitrovic, it just worked out really well for this entire game. I'm a little sad Dusan Tadic didn't score as well either. I know he had one or two chances. Uh, I wanted him to rip a long shot so bad. But it's... It's not Tadic. It's not really Tadic. But that number 10 jersey really feels like it's 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 fitting kind of right right now. Tadic is fitting kind of right. Because everything that he appears to be doing from that center attacking mid, like center forward position, uh, whether it's for Ajax in the Champions League or for or in the Air Divisi, or whether it's for Serbia, it's working. It really is. His, his season so far has been miraculous. Like... Thinking about where he was with Southampton to where he is now with Serbia and Ajax, it is... It's probably one of the best come-up stories uh, or, or transformation stories in world football out right now because the guy has been lights out in the Eredivisie for Ajax. He was very, very good today for his country. Luka Jovic is another one of those, uh, getting sold very, very early uh, by Benfica, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was Benfica. Um, heading over to Frankfurt and absolutely bossing up the Bundesliga both years that he was in it. And then, you know, got his dream move to Real Madrid. So the, the future Real Madrid striker, Luka Jovic, getting on the board. And Alexander Mitrovic... Uh, who unfortunately got relegated this season with Fulham. I thought he was an absolute monster of a striker there as well. He's probably he'll probably he'll end back up, you know, in, in a in a top league because he is honestly a top top striker. He's a big, bulky, you know, tank engine looking dude who also is very very good uh, at finding the back of the net. So I, I'm I'm seeing a lot of what this Serbia team could end up doing in the future. But I think they played a classic game, 82% uh, pass accuracy, 66% possession, four goals on 10 shots on target with 22 in total, holding Lithuania to just one, which Lithuania, 
I feel I feel really bad for them, but at the same time, uh, I, I feel better for Serbia because that first game of this international break was a horror story. And so to then reverse its fortunes, get a very good convincing win, sort of papers over the cracks of what they now need to do, and that's get their players back healthy. You know, Ser Sergej Milenkovic Savage isn't even here. Uh, the defense was kind of shaky. Kolarov uh, and, and Milenkovic as well on the back were good, uh, but I mean they gave up a penalty as well, so they still have some work to do. But I think Serbia, you know, it's a much better output than what they had against the Ukraine, which is why you guys should let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the Serbia versus Lithuania match. Uh, th does this, you know, help Serbia in terms of the national team setup? Does, does it take away from the heartbreak of the Ukraine game? What should they be? What, what should be fixed uh, at the national team level for Serbia? You guys should let me know down in the comments below. And peace.